Hello and welcome. This is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions. And today I briefly want to talk about four common metrics that help assess the riskiness of real estate financing. We're going to review the loan to value, the debt service coverage ratio, the debt yield, and the loan constant. Using real numbers, we're going to take a deeper look at what purpose each metric serves and as importantly, how they impact one another. I also recently published a blog post on this topic. So if you're looking for further learning beyond what this video is going to provide, see the link in the description below. If you've been enjoying Tactica's real estate content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. So we're looking at a sample acquisitions opportunity. On the left side, we have purchase and financing details. And then on the right side, we have some high level basic operating details. The lender's offering us a 70% LTV loan uh, as long as the debt service coverage ratio is a 1.2 or higher. The loan to value or the LTV for short just takes the loan proceeds divided by the purchase price. And a lot of times, lenders will quote their financing in LTV terms. Uh, and pretty much all of Tactica's free pro forma templates and our paid models, the loan to value is always a input that the, the user, the Excel user needs to, to enter in, whether it's 70% or 80% or 50%. And then that's gonna determine the loan amount. In this example, the purchase price is 7.5 million. The lender's offering 70% financing, which equates to a 5.25 million dollar loan. The other terms, it's a 7.25% interest rate. The amortization period is 30 years. That all adds out then to a $429,771 annual payment. So what we need to do then is do a debt coverage calculation to make sure the property operations are going to meet the lender's requirements. So right below annual cash flow, I will make the DSCR calculation, which is the acronym for debt service coverage ratio. And that formula is simply just the NOI, the annual NOI divided by the annual debt service. DSCR, so then we'll take the property NOI divided by the annual payment. We're only at a 1.11 at this juncture. What do we need to do? We're gonna need to make some adjustments to the financial model so this climbs to 120. So I'm gonna come back over and we're gonna switch this LTV assumption. We're gonna back it down from 70% to 65%. Once I do that, the annual loan payment goes down to 399,000 and that debt service coverage ratio is now at a 1.20, which would meet the lender's requirements. This is one of the most common obstacles you'll run into when you're underwriting these deals is making sure that assuming you know your, your underwriting is accurate or, or you're even underwriting based off of historical financials, that you have enough clearance to cover the lender's debt service coverage ratio. A lot of times that's gonna require you to come back to your finance assumptions, back off the leverage a little bit like we did in this example, and then you can see that DSCR climb to an appropriate level. So in summary, the, the LTV and the DSCR are linked. You're always kind of going back and forth between them as the loan to value decreases the DSCR is always going to increase. But let's say the lender has one more caveat. They're happy with the DSCR, but they also wanna know that the debt yield of this particular deal is either a 10.5% or greater. So what is the debt yield? The debt yield takes the net operating income at the property divided by the loan proceeds outstanding. From the lender's perspective, this metric offers two big benefits. First. It measures the property's yield on an outstanding debt if the lender ever has to take over the property, essentially take it back, they can do a quick calculation on what their payback would be. If they required a 10.5% debt yield on the current NOI of 479,000 approximately, it would equal about 9.5 years to be paid back in full if they took over this property and continued to operate it. It's also helpful because you can compare the debt yield to the market cap rate to determine how much clearance there is for the lender to be paid in whole if the property is sold, typically in a, a distress situation. So now let's calculate the debt yield and we'll do that over here. And as a refresher, the debt yield is the property NOI divided by the loan balance outstanding. So if we take this 479,000 divided by the loan amount, 9.82%, this is too low, the lender's requiring a 10.5, so what do we need to do? We need to go back and adjust the LTV down 
to try to boost that debt yield. So if we, let's try 60%. If we do 60%, we hit that 10.5, we're actually at a 10.64, so we have a little bit of clearance there. However, now our loan proceeds are down to 4.5 million. So in summary, when the LTV is decreased, the debt service coverage ratio is gonna increase and the debt yield is also going to increase. And then there's one more big debt metric I wanna talk about and that's the loan constant. The loan constant takes the annual loan payment divided by the loan balance outstanding. I'll calculate that right under the debt yield. We take the annual loan payment divided by the loan amount and we get 8.19%. The loan constant is on a little bit of an island. Changing the LTV or the purchase price will have no impact on the loan constant because both the numerator and the denominator of this equation will change commensurately. So to show you that, if we back this down to 50%, the loan constant stays at 8.19. I'll put it back at 60. If we change like the purchase price, uh, increase it to 8.5 million, the loan constant stays the same. The loan constant will change by altering the interest rate and the amortization. So if we increase the interest rate to say 8%, now the loan constant will increase to 8.81%. The amortization period will also impact it. If we back 30 down to 25, that also increases the loan constant. The benefit of the loan constant is unleashed when we compare it to the project cap rate. So let's go ahead and calculate a cap rate real quick. So if we take the property NOI divided by the purchase price, we can see that the loan constant of 8.19% is greater than the cap rate, 6.38%. Uh, and when this happens, when the loan constant is greater than the cap rate, leverage is negative and financing is actually hurting our return on cash invested. We can see this if we do a cash on cash return calculation. I'll do that under the DSCR, so cash on cash. And then we're gonna take our annual cash flow and then divide it by how much cash we have in the deal, which is the purchase price minus the financing in the cash on cash return is 3.68%. So in other words, if we if we purchase this deal with 100% cash, our yield would be essentially be our cap rate, which is 6.38%. But since we're financing this and the loan constant is higher than the cap rate, that drags the cash on cash return lower. It's only 3.68%, suppressing our yield. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to pay less for the asset if we want that leverage to be positive and for our cash on cash return to be higher than the cap rate. So I'm just gonna play with some numbers here. Let's try 5.5 million. That did the trick. So we took $2 million off the purchase price. Now the cap rate of 8.71% is greater than the loan constant of 8.19% and our cash on cash return is nearly 9.5%. Our leverage is positive. We're getting a better yield on our cash invested, which is hopefully your goal when you're looking at these leveraged real estate deals. If you wanna learn more about negative leverage, I have both a blog post and a YouTube video on this topic linked in the description. In summary, we covered four metrics that help investors and lenders evaluate the risk of financing. We looked at loan to value or LTV, which takes loan proceeds divided by the purchase price. And this tells us what percentage of the capital stack constitutes debt. Then we looked at debt coverage, debt service coverage ratio or DSCR, which takes the NOI of the property divided by the debt service. And this measures the clearance property income has over the loan payments. Debt yield was next. The debt yield looks at the NOI divided by the loan proceeds outstanding. This calculates the property's yield on outstanding debt. And finally, we looked at the loan constant, which takes the debt service divided by loan proceeds outstanding. And this shows us the debt service as a percentage of the outstanding debt. Using real numbers, we saw how these four metrics interact and how we can use them to improve the overall analysis of the investments financing options. I recently published a blog post on this topic, so if you're interested in further learning, you can see that link in the description below. If you've been enjoying Tactica's real estate analysis content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to our channel, and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.